All right. Let me see. I'm Chuck E. Cheese. You're Chuck E. Cheese. I'm Red to see you. Yeah. What have uh, What have you been up to? Yeah. What have you been up to? I don't want to get it. <laughs> you don't... <laughs> Where are your crazy brothers at? <laughs> Where are your crazy brothers? Nope, don't touch that. I'm the name the river. I don't want to go to the monkey soon. <laughs> Why can't why can't we go to the zoo right now? No. No. Why can't we go to the zoo right now? Uh. It's closed, I, huh? I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, but why can't we go to Chuck E. Cheese? Chuck E. Cheese closed. Chuck E. Cheese is closed, Jim. Yeah. I'm going to go to All right. Say bye bye. Say bye. No, bye. And go play with your bubbas, okay? Come on. Okay, I'll get you water. Come on. All right, family. Delaney likes to get on a little bit early. I'm sure some of you saw that, saw her eye. It's looking a, a lot better. Um, her and Bailey got their feet mixed up, and uh, she went face first. And I mean, it was like it was fast, but it was slow motion. Um, as she fell forward and hit the wooden foot of uh, our bed, uh, so she had a nice shiner. So the first day she woke up, she barely could open her eye, but she's tough. She didn't cry long, but you knew that it hurt her. So, got a couple minutes. Get people on. Hello. Thank you, everybody that's on. Tanya, Teresa, and Anna. Yes. Hi, Joel. I saw that post Teresa made about you today. Looking good. I like that picture now. You could have been a model, Joel. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that. And Anna, no need to put an APB out on Nicole. I finally talked to her yesterday about Easter service. So, uh, everything is good there. I pray everyone's week has been uh, well. Welcome to our Wednesday night. We got about another minute, and then we'll get uh, we will get started. I'm back in my uh, my closet. Um, so bear with me but sunday we will be live streaming from the church um, unless we are all put on that house um the order to stay in our house uh, well thank you that's probably why she called me back then anna but i don't know about y'all but i'm getting excited for easter getting excited for easter all right, so it's 7 o'clock. Let me open us up in a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll take a couple of minutes, a couple seconds. You can type it while I'm praying if you want, uh, but we will uh, do some prayer requests. And uh, once we get through some prayer requests, I'll do a, a little devotional, a little talk, and then we will uh, we will sign off until Sunday morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you once again for another day, God, where we are here on this earth, God, and we are healthy. God, we thank you for everything that you do for us and everything that you give us, God, and we pray for those that have been affected by COVID-19. God, we pray for the doctors and the nurses and the first responders that are on the front line, God, because we have many within our church, and not just our church, but the church in, in general, God. You're the big body that is that works in the hospital, hospitals, excuse me, doctors, nurses. God, we just pray for all of them, God. And God, we just pray that as we continue to try and figure out what you want from us and what you need from us um, to do during this time, God, I just pray that you continue to speak to us and continue to show us how you want us to be and what you want us to do. And so, God, we just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let me uh, see. Yeah. 
There, got a little bit more light. I forgot about that light in the corner. Uh, Kathy and Virginia, Don. Hey, I've talked to him a couple times today as we're trying to get stuff uh, situated and figured out for our Easter service and uh, what that's going to look like. So I don't know if many of you know, but we have quite a few birthdays today, which is funny because it's my brother's birthday and his wife's birthday. Uh, it's kind of funny that they found each other and they both have the same birthdays. So we also have uh, Leela Cross and Craig Floyd. Um, Craig is uh, Mitchell Floyd's son and then Leela, which is Amanda Thigpen's uh, mama. So uh, we want to say happy birthday to them all, but we have a really special birthday and it's kind of fitting for this individual. Because I called my brother a full baby all the growing up since he was born on April 1st. But believe it or not, today is Mike Welch's birthday. Isn't, isn't that fitting that uh, Mike Welch was born on April Fool's? Um, I don't. If, if you don't think God's got a sense of humor, that one right there ought to answer that question. But uh, happy birthday, Mike. And happy birthday, all that have birthdays. So, uh, a, a little joke for you. Knock, knock. And, of course, you guys are all saying who's there, right? Mikey. Mikey who? Mikey doesn't fit in the keyhole. And that was for you, Mike. Ba boom So let's see here. Ooh. For all of you that have seen the cartoon, the Disney cartoon, Frozen, why can't Elsa have a balloon? I know all the kids will get this one. Because she will let it go. That's the song that she sings. All right. Here we go. And so this is because it's April Fool's Day, and don't worry, I'm not going to April Fool you, I'm not going to pull a trick on you, uh, but I figure we'd do some some jokes, even if you guys don't like them, I'm having fun with it. So, so how do we know that the ocean is friendly? It waves. Yeah, some of these are some that uh, Mike has said before, so I'm trying not to uh, uh, repeat them. Oh, I'm a Star Wars fan. What do you call a droid that takes the long way around? R2 Detour. <laughs> I like that one. What is brown, hairy, and wears sunglasses? A coconut on vacation. Oh, come on. Now that's funny. I don't care who you are. All right. What did one plate say to the other plate? Dinner's on me. <laughs> All right, last one, last one. No, I got two more. Yep, two more. All right, what do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? A dino snore. <laughs> dino snore, get it? All right. Um, what is loud, fast, and crunchy? A rocket chip. Ba-dum, all right, so happy April Fool's Day. Happy birthday to everybody that's got uh, a birthday today. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed those jokes just a little bit. But at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, if you have any prayer requests and you feel comfortable, um, you know, put them on the, on the stream. If not, you can send a, a private message and, uh, and just put, you know, maybe uh, unspoken and we will pray for the unspoken and then I'll have the you know specific prayer, but totally up to you. I will tell you uh, one of the praises. Um, one of the praises is that Linda is home. Uh, Linda is home. Her stay was one day longer than expected, and she had one more procedure than expected. But Linda is home, and if she's not resting, I'm sure she's on here with Kathy watching with us. So we just praise God. Thank you for all the prayers. Um, yes, Teresa Cecilia Beasley uh, talked to her yesterday. Um, her biopsy did not come back very good on her thumb, so they, she's got to go in this Thursday or tomorrow morning. Matter of fact, I'm her alarm clock. Uh, she asked, because she, she doesn't have alarm clock, she don't got to get up and go nowhere. So she asked if I would call her at 4 in the morning to wake her up so she could be at the hospital at 5, and they're going to run some more biopsies. Um, and she said later on, uh, I don't know when, but at some point they're going to end up taking her thumb so please pray for Cecilia uh, during this time. Uh, Teresa's Aunt Barbara, uh, she's in the hospital, possible blood clot. So uh, thank you, Teresa, for, for reminding me and for that information. Um, any other prayer requests? Mary and Alex, how's your cousin doing? Got it, Whitney, unspoken. And of course, we're praying for you as you have to put up with uh, your stir-crazy husband in between his golf outings. So is there any other prayer requests? 
or praises. You can do them uh, however you want to do it. Prayer request or praises. Everybody's just happy. Happy being <laughs> quarantined in your house. Uh, yes, sir. Unspoken. Got it, William. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Mama. Our cousin Lisa and her family that just lost uh, the six, um, five uh, foster kids and the one adopted daughter. Yes, Kathy. Uh, we'll keep praying for you and Linda for a speedy recovery. For Linda, and yes, keep praying for you, Kathy, and your family. Yes, sir, Chris, for all the frontline workers. Thank you. And Virginia, I'm glad to see you're very happy. You're married to Don. Uh, Donald, how can you not be happy, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I agree. You know, and of course, we're going to see the numbers go up as the tests, um, as more people are getting tested. Um, I, I believe this is a serious virus. Uh, I don't disagree with anything that's said, but the numbers don't really scare me in the sense because we're finally testing them. And what scares me, if you will, and I, I say scared just using that term, is how many people aren't tested that have it. Um, I had to take Felicia. Some of you know Felicia was dealing with a pretty significant um, uh, sinus infection and ear infection before we even went to Honduras in February to where she went to the faster care twice, um, You know, had to get some shots, different medications. She wasn't perfect, but she was better. And so we went to Honduras. That's where her ear infection kicked in, so we had to get some medication, had Honduran doctors looking at her, and then we got back here, and things just weren't getting better, and I think a lot of it has to do with the pollen, too, so I drove her to the drive through clinic there at Colonial Family Practice, and as we were talking to the doctor, of course, she got the swab, because he said they're swabbing everybody that comes in, regardless of what they say they have, because he said right now, um, they're getting positive tests back from people that just have sniffles. So that's what makes this virus different and, and scary is the fact that um, it presents differently in different people. So while you may think that you're okay, and again, Felicia didn't have fever. She's never, she hadn't had a cough, um, but he just said we're, we're testing everybody because of that fact, because people are testing positive and is, they just simply have sniffles. Um, you know, what you would think is maybe pollen caused or just a, a cold because of the weather changing back and forth. So... Um, that's the, the scary part, if you will, about the COVID-19. So, um, just pray that we continue, that God keeps, keep, uh, continues to keep us safe, continues to keep us healthy, and then pray for those that have gotten it, uh, for them and their families as more stories are coming out about people passing away from it. So, anything else? Any other prayer requests? All right. Well, let's go. Since I don't have Freddie at my house with me, I guess I got to do the praying on this one. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just lift up each and every one of these prayer requests, God. From the unspokens, you know what's going on in those individuals' lives, God. And I just pray that you continue to work in those situations, God, that they can see you working in those situations. God, I pray for those that have lost loved ones, God, that they're going through a time right now where they're asking why. Why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to them? And God, sometimes we're just not going to get that answer, but we know that you are in control, and I just want to praise you for that. As I've read my cousin's um uh, Facebook posts and how they do talk about being broken hearted and how their lives will never be the same, but then they, they always end it with your glory, God, and going back to you and how they're leaning on you during these times. God, thank you for Linda's successful um, surgeries, God, and I just thank you that she is back home. We pray for a speedy recovery. We pray for all those that are working the front lines. God, we pray for the hospital workers and the first responders. God, we pray for those that have the virus, God, for quick healing. We pray for those that have lost folks to the virus, God. We pray for our leadership as they're having to make tough decisions with a lot of unknown. God, pray for Cecilia Beasley as she's going in for some more work tomorrow morning, God, some more testing. 
God, your hand be in that and that your will be done, God. But we pray for healing for our sister Cecilia. And God, we pray for Teresa's aunt who may have a blood clot, God. We just pray, we just lift lift her up again and that your healing hand reaches down. God, I pray for every family that's in our church that used to go to our church, God, and family members of folks that are in our church, God, that you continue to protect us all. Continue to show us what you want us to learn during these difficult times. Continue to uh, protect us, God. And continue to allow us to feel your warmth and your love. Continue to light our paths, God. And even when we make make mistakes, continue to make our paths straight. And God, we just love you and thank you for everything that you are going to do and everything that you will do and everything that you have done. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, real quick, uh, before we get into the the what I have for us tonight, a reminder that we are going to do a drive-in service, um, not this upcoming Sunday, but uh, Easter Sunday. We're going to do a drive-in service that will involve communion. Somebody brought up a great point. If you do not feel comfortable getting the communion cup, and what it is is it's a cup that's got a seal on the top, and then on top of that is the bread, and then there's a seal, bubbled seal over that, um, so it just comes in one. Um, Feel free to bring your own bread and juice. Uh, You don't have to take what we are offering. Um, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to. And so what I'm saying is, we, we want you to join us on that drive, drive-in drive um, Easter service, but uh, if you want to take communion with us, but you don't really feel comfortable grabbing something that other people's hands have been in, then we can um, then bring your own. Uh, it's the semblance, all right? It's the semblance, and, and I, I, I'm fairly certain, you know, reading through the Bible, that uh, you don't have to get the nasty grape juice uh, to do this, uh, but uh, you can, uh, somebody... Somebody mentioned today, and I won't say her name, uh, you could do fruit punch and some crackers. But uh, I know it, it is a very holy thing. It's a, it's a very, uh, you know, sacrament. So we want to keep it holy. We want to keep it reverent. But um, during these times, I want to make sure that people feel safe and feel comfortable and also don't feel left out. For those that aren't going to be able to make it, if you can let myself or Donna know, we can get the um, communion stuff to you or if you have stuff at home uh, but we are going to stream it live as well so great question Virginia so Easter Sunday we're gonna start um, at 10 o'clock and at 10 o'clock what's gonna happen is um, David Nesbitt's gonna go live with his Sunday school class and then at that same time we're gonna be at the church Somebody will be outside with the box of the communion for people to drive underneath the overhang and to grab it. And there'll be some hand sanitizer out there. And then once you get the communion, however many you need for your vehicle, you're going to drive over and park across the street. I say we'll start at 11, but I'm fairly certain um, we'll probably be starting about a little after 1030 when David Nesbitt's done with his Sunday school class. Uh, We'll probably transition over because... You know, I don't want somebody that shows up at, say, 10, 10 10.05, they get their communion, or they park because they're ready to go. I don't want them to sit there and wait an hour. So as soon as cars stop showing up and and grabbing or parking, um, then we're going to go ahead and David's done with his Sunday school. We're going to get started. But the latest we will get started is 11 o'clock with the service. Uh, And the plan is everybody will stay in their vehicle. Um, We were looking at doing an FM radio. That was going to... We couldn't get there from here. We wouldn't be able to get it in time. So if you just crack your windows, you'll be able to hear us because there'll be speakers working on um, some songs, even if we just got to play some music and um, things like that. So 10 o'clock is when we're going to start handing out communion. Uh, People can start parking over there, getting set up. And then uh, around 10.30, you know, 10.40-ish, I'm fairly certain we'll start the service and then 11, uh, but no later than 11 o'clock. Does that, does that answer everybody's question? Again, you can bring your own communion. You do not have to take what we are handing out. Uh, you know, there are, there are some risks no matter what we do. We're trying to minimize them to the best of our ability. Uh, and, and so 
one of the ways we can minimize the risk of that is just offering and you know letting you know that you can do your own communion. Uh, I've told you all the story when we were in Honduras. I was responsible. Uh, this was not last year, the year before. I was responsible for the um, communion. So I had bought the box, just like you're going to see Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday. I bought the box, had everything ready, packed all my stuff, got up that morning because we leave O-Dark 30 in the morning, and got to the airport and realized I left it in my bedroom floor, on my bedroom floor. So at the end of the week, when we did communion as a as a team, we did saltine crackers and grape, uh, grape juice that we found on the local economy. So um, again, God is honored. Uh, no matter if you do it out of something that you buy that says the Lord's Supper uh, and it looks like what you've always done or if you feel comfortable doing a cracker and some grape juice. Um, it's all about Him and what He sacrificed for us and that's what the focus should be on. Alright, so any other questions about how things are going, what we're doing? Uh, the church doors are not going to be open for the foreseeable future. I mean, as soon as the virus uh, decides to uh, uh, as soon as somebody can get a get get a handle on a vaccine or you know if it just runs its course whenever that is as soon as that is I promise you we're gonna open our doors and uh, Austin and I have been talking uh, we're gonna make it a make it a nice nice big celebration that we can come back together and we'll be praising God for what he's done what he's shown us through this time so um, but for the time being we're just got to continue this way. I will be continuing until they tell us we cannot uh, doing Sunday morning from the church. Sunday morning at a minimum I will be doing from the church. And um, Donald Bryant is working on some things to help with the uh, volume as well as some other stuff. So we're, we're going to make it better. We're, we're, every time we do this, we're, we're getting better. So thank you for y'all's patience. So any questions about anything going on at the church, you can still send in your tithes if you want to. You can tithe online um, or you can hold on to it um, until we come back. So we've had folks mail it in. We've had folks show up like Sunday morning. I had a couple folks show up because they knew we were going to be there, dropped their tithe off and left. Um, so totally up to you guys how you want to do it. But the offer, the option is there because I know that is a, a discipline of uh, being a Christ follower. And I do not want to take... A discipline away from you and I do not want you to feel like a discipline is being taken away from you or that you're sinning so we have made options for you to continue to tithe all right so if there's nothing else you know what I want to talk about tonight is God's promises you can read throughout the Bible God has made many promises and there's not one promise that he has made that he did not follow through with. And I'm not going to focus on the Old Testament promises because I've preached on a lot of them. And even the New Testament ones I've, I've talked about during sermons or during these. But what I want to get at is the one I want to focus on is the rainbow. And we know that after the flood, that when, when God put that rainbow over for, for Noah and his family to see... It was a promise that he would never do that again. He would never flood the earth and wipe out basically all of humanity. It's a promise he made. And he has he has fallen uh he has fallen through with that promise, gone through with that promise. He has not done that again. And so it's amazing every time I see a rainbow, I just think of the promise that God gave Noah. So if you go into the New Testament, there's tons of promises and I'm just going to hit a few. But the first one is Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So what he's saying is if you seek me first, you seek the kingdom. If you're focused, if you're kingdom focused, all these things will be added to you. And what are all these things? That's innumerable. We can't number those, but we know it's fruit of the Spirit. That's one of them. Uh, we know in the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, that's another one. You, you're going to be focusing on heaven, but you know, you, you're you going to be here on this earth doing, doing the Lord's work. You know, peace that surpasses all understanding. I mean, you name it, but all that will be added to you. And that's his promise. And he wants you to take him up on it. You know, because we always, as we go um, through this life, this thing that we call life, especially in times like right now, we forget the foundation that is our faith. 
And we start allowing all these things that are going on in this world to kind of draw us and take us away from God and his promise to us. See, if we seek God, if we seek God and his kingdom, his, and his righteousness, it's going to open the door to all the other needs in this world. And I'm talking about financial needs, relationships, and I mean, just the smallest, minute details. The smallest, minute details. I mean, how many times have you, have you felt like you've lost something, you couldn't find something? And then all of a sudden you're sitting there, you know, it may have gone a little, uh, a little past the time you were looking, your, your frustration is kind of over. And then all of a sudden it pops in your head. It was right there or it's right there. I mean, God's in those moments. God is in every detail of our life, no matter how big or how small he is in every detail, or at least he wants to be. All we have to do is let him, especially when we're talking about making Decision. So in John, John 1, 12, we read, But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So this is salvation. All you have to do is call upon his name. All you have to do is accept his free gift. There's nothing that you can do. He promises to save you. He promises to keep you from the second death. He promises to adopt you into his family. See, we don't need to work for this salvation. It's a gift. And that's the beauty of the whole thing. And becoming a child of God is a powerful thing. It is a very powerful thing. Think of how much power it took for Jesus to raise Lazarus from the dead. Think of how much power it took for, for God to raise Jesus from the dead. That resurrection power, we're coming up on Easter. When you become a son or a daughter of Jesus or a son and daughter of God in that family, you have that resurrection power in you. You have that in you. What a joyous thing to think about. What a joyous thing to think about. And then in Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work for good for those who are called according to his purpose. I've used that a lot. I love that verse. And when, when, you, when you sit there and you think about it, you know, good in this sense is not good in our human definition of good. Because life is still going to happen. COVID-19 is going to happen. Right, And I want to make sure, because I have seen a lot of uh, heretical pastors, a lot of things that have, have gone on, especially on Facebook, please understand that, there, that the COVID-19 is not a punishment by God. See, there are some things, there are some things that just happen because we live in a broken world. Now, does God want us to learn from this? Of course. Because he can use all things. Could God come down and, and fix this and wipe this out immediately? Of course he could, can. But remember, he made in Genesis 1, in, Gen in the book of Genesis, in the first two chapters, he made a perfect earth. The Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, everything was perfect. And then man wanted to be like God. So they disobeyed God and did what they wanted to do. So because of that, we to this day and until the rapture or our death will suffer from the consequences of the original sin. See, there is righteous judgment and righteous punishment by God and by Jesus. But things like this are not it. Things like this are because we live in a broken world. To me, it's the same thing as the thorns on a rose bush. As the snake is slithering on its belly to this day because of what Satan did as the snake. These are consequences of living in a broken world. So at times, circumstances outside of our control enter our life and put us in a place where we with struggle or pain. And you know, even bad things happen to us as we know that the sun, uh, the rain and the sun shine on the just and the unjust. But remember, 
Whatever the enemy means for evil, God will mean for good. And that his love and power is enough to turn it around. That his love and power is enough to turn it around. And you have that power inside of you as, as a Christian. So in 2 second, second Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. See, this is Paul reminding us that, that the promises of God are, are, you could take it to the bank, they're rock solid. If God promises something, if God tells us something in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. And again, see, where we mess this up as humans is, okay, I want a million dollars, so I ask God for a million dollars, he's going to give it to me. That's what that scripture says. That's not what that says. If you ask in a righteous, in a holy, in a humble manner, if your prayer is for others, if your prayer is about furthering the kingdom, if your prayers are about, you know, God, what are you trying to show me? If your prayers are Christ-centered and Christ-focused, he's going to answer them. And see, a lot of times we don't like the way he answers them. And so we, again, say we're being punished or he didn't hear us. Or, he heard us. He answered it to his glory. He answered it to his glory. So God isn't a man and his promises are guaranteed. And then we, of course, know that uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So right now we have a lot of folks, you know, that are, that are isolated, quarantined, and suffering depression. You know, dealing with having, you know, these thoughts that run through their head because they're not out being able to talk to people. They're social creatures, and even the most introverted person wants to be out right now. But you remember when, when Paul wrote that, it was because he was in prison. And oh, by the way, he had been shipwrecked. He had been almost stoned to death. I mean, Paul for years had been tormented um, as a prisoner waiting to be taken back to Rome and be put in front of the, the governor and, and the leadership of Rome. So he's in prison and he's writing, I can do all things through Christ. So what that means is, yes, as, as, a, as a Christian, as a child of God, we, can, we, we are content in everything. So right now, as we're stuck in our houses, we are content. And why are we content? We're content because we know who's in control. We're content because we know who's in control. Does that mean that our human emotions and our human thoughts aren't going to still creep up? No, of course not. But you remember those words. I can do all things or I can handle all things through Christ who gives me strength, who strengthens me. See, because when we go through these times where we feel the furthest from God, that's when we need to stop and lean back. How many, how many of you remember trust falls, right? The, the whole thing with the team building. Trust fall back into God. He's got you. And he will get you through this, just like he's gotten you through everything else in your life. Because if we make it to the rapture, this is not going to be the worst thing that as Christians we are going to have to go through or deal with. So know that he is there to strengthen you. And again, 2 Timothy 1.7, we talked about recently, but God gave us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Just remember that. I love that verse. There are multiple times a day where I repeat that verse over and over and over in my head. Especially when I'm, when, when, when I'm talking to Austin or I'm talking to somebody about you know decisions for the church and decisions that are going to affect my family and not just my immediate family, my wife and my beautiful children, but you know the folks are in the church, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because I wouldn't be able to live with myself if we do something that in, inadvertently causes COVID to hit us. And God forbid somebody dies from it. But God does not give us the spirit of fear, so I remember that. And I continue praying to him because I know that as long as we stay in his will, we're going to be okay. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because his will is the safest place to be. But I can promise you, uh, we, and I say we because I am not making every decision by myself, we will not make decisions that's going to put anybody in harm's way. And if anybody feels like we do, please let us know. Because your opinion matters. This is your church. This You're part of this body. 
So then in Hebrews it says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I mean, what an amazing scripture for the time that we are in now. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. So with confidence we can go to God. With confidence we can say, God, you promised this. God, please give us this. God, protect those folks out there. With confidence, we can go to God. We can draw near to the throne of grace. That we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, God's there when we need Him. And we must have the confidence to draw near to Him. And not think, oh, whatever you're thinking. Don't think it. Have confidence and know that you can draw near to God because he draws near to you. The Bible says that too. See, because prayer is our connection to God. It's our conversation with God. And he's always there. He's ready to listen. I don't care what you've done in your life. I don't care what you think is keeping you from from a relationship with him. Because the funny part about it is God already knows, so why are we so afraid to go to him? God sees and knows everything that we're doing. He sees and knows everything that we're thinking. So why are we so afraid to go to him when he already knows? That's just our human stubbornness. But get the confidence and draw near to the throne of grace. And in my favorite, in the last one, and in Revelations, the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. See, Revelations might as well say, we win. See, because no matter what's going on, Christians need to have the long game mentality. We need to have the 10,000 foot viewpoint. Because... Yes, it's easy to get wrapped up in what's going on. It's re- easy to get wrapped up in everything and this is happening and that person's sick and this person's in the hospital and that. It's so easy to get drugged down. But remember, no matter what happens, God is in control and he wins. And he wins. And if you are a Christian and if you are saved, he will never blot you out of the book of life. He will confess you before the angels and say, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. What an awesome, awesome thought. See, because this promises that we will never be blotted out of the book of life. Once it is written, it is there. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Nobody can grasp you out of his hand, or nobody can pull you out of the grasp of his hand. You are his child. So what do we have to fear? What do we have to fear? If we're just looking down here on this earth, we have a whole lot to fear. We have a whole lot to worry about. We have a whole lot of stresses in our life. But if we have our mind on the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, then we know who's in charge. We know that his, he keeps his promises. And we know that we win. Whether that's in death or in the rapture, the Christians, the brothers and sisters, the bride of Christ wins. And it's all to the glory of God. So before I sign off, before I pray um, to close this out tonight, I would like to uh, ask that as as we get off of here, I encourage you all again to grab your significant other, your family, huddle around and pray. Pray for whatever God lays on your heart. And of course, pray for our leadership that's having to make decisions um, at the federal level, the state level, and even, even in the church. Pray for the deacons as they're working hard and they're scratching their heads and they're trying to come up with ways for us to stay connected even during these times where you know, we're forced to not be connected physically. So we have stuff that's on, the, that's on the horizon, stuff that's coming in. Hopefully we'll open those doors to the church sooner rather than later. But if we don't, 
Just know that we are here for you, we are praying for you, and we love you. And God's got you. So, is it before we close in prayer, is there anything else? Anything else? Anything exciting? Did anybody do anything exciting you want to share with us today during isolation? Did Joel finish a 10,000 piece puzzle? Um, nobody did anything exciting today? Yeah, don't worry, I didn't either. I'd like to say I saved the world, built a fire pit, took care of stuff around the yard. I was trying to relax. And thank God I have a, a beautiful wife, a soulmate, who allowed me to relax today because it was needed. So any questions? Going once? Going twice? All right, sold. <laughs> Austin may go golfing every day this week. Hey, so Whitney, I will tell you with Austin, I got what you were saying. I told him he could come to the church and hang out with me. We could do things. Um, but he said he was busy. Now I know what he was busy doing. Um, so, yes, please pray for those folks that are that are losing their jobs, have lost their jobs, uh, or, you know, or even... Uh, talking about having to close their businesses because of the effects of these of the leadership's decision and the right decision because of the way this virus spreads. Um, so please continue to pray for those folks and praise uh, our God for those that still have jobs and still can take care of their families. Um, and Teresa, you do not have three new kittens for Felicia. We're going to need to get the... Uh, Whitney, tell Austin I'm going to need that parsonage ready because I'm going to leave her and these cats. If she keeps bringing cats home... They can stay here in Sumter. I'm going to live out there in the parsonage. So, might want to get that going. I'm going to have to keep her and Teresa and Joel from talking. This isolation might not be too bad. Stay off Facebook. Nah. I love y'all. All right. So, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I encourage you all to continue praying, continue to spend time together. You know, now is an awesome opportunity as head of households or as, as leaders in your family, no matter what that looks like, to dig into the Bible and, and teach your family, teach yourselves. Because that's what they did back in the biblical times. Paul couldn't be everywhere. That's why he had to write letters. They all had to split up and go different areas. So please take this time to grow in your faith and to grow in your knowledge. And I do not know everything. I promise you that. You all know that. You hear me speak. You hear me try to preach, so but I can help you out if you have any questions. I can at least point you to, to a direction to look stuff up, or I can even give you some stuff that I have on whatever your question is. But take this time to grow in the Word, and to mature, and to grow spiritually. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the time that we get to have together. Even though it is over the internet, God, it's on these the, the mediums like Facebook Live and Facebook and YouTube, God, but we want to praise you for allowing those things to be created and allowing us to be able to use them for these things. God, because we have seen more collectively amongst all the pastors as they talk, we have people f that are watching and listening that they'll never darken the door of a church, but they're hearing the gospel now. So God, I pray that you continue to use this. Continue to reach out, God, to continue to touch those hearts. Because we are still supposed to be out there on mission. We're still supposed to be leading people to you. And God, I just pray that you give us that chance. And once again, God, I pray for all those that have to make tough decisions over the next coming months, God, and, or the coming weeks. God, I pray that no matter what First Baptist Church of Turbeville does, God, that it glorifies you. God, please continue to keep our family safe. Continue to bless them. And continue to keep them. And we just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all. We will see you guys Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, or no, forgive me. Sunday at 11 o'clock. This Sunday is not Easter Sunday. 
Sunday at 11 o'clock on live. I will be doing it from the sanctuary, but the church is not open. Uh, there'll be about three, maybe four people there, uh, depending on um, if we can convince one person. If we don't put her on camera, if she'll play the piano. I won't say any names, but uh, nah, we're excited, and I look forward to getting back together with you all on Sunday. I'm just a phone call away. Know that I'm praying for each and every one of you daily. I love you, and I pray that you have a blessed rest of your evening. Signing off for now. Love you too, William.